welcome to Snoozecast, the podcast designed to help you fall asleep. Find us at snoozecast.com, and if you enjoy our show, please share us with a friend. If you would like to get an email once a week with upcoming sleep stories and other news, subscribe to the Snooze Letter at snoozecast.com. This episode is brought to you by Crumpets and Kringles. Tonight, we'll read recipes on schoolroom cakes, along with tea cakes and biscuits, from the Cake and Biscuit book by Elizabeth Douglas, published in 1903. When this cookbook was published, most American students attended a one-room schoolhouse. A single teacher would typically have students of all ages in one class. The youngest children sat in the front, while the oldest sat in the back. Students memorized and recited their lessons, and when they were lucky, they ate home-baked treats like the ones here. Let's get cozy. Close your eyes. Relax your body into the softness of your bed. Now, take a few deep breaths. General directions for cake making. Utensils. Use earthenware bowls and wooden spoons for mixing. Several sets of tins are necessary if cake is to be made often. One or two ordinary round tins, a tin with a hollow tube in the center, square tins, and shallow round tins about eight inches in diameter for jam sandwich and layer cakes should be kept. A small dripping pan is very good to bake gingerbread in, and for very light cakes, the German tin with a loose bottom should be used. These tins are excellent, for the bottom can be pushed up away from the sides, and there is no danger of the cake being broken in taking it out of the tin. They can be bought at Harrods Stores, Brompton Road. Measuring Flour, sugar, salt, ground spices, soda must always be sifted before measuring. This is of the utmost importance in making good cakes. A cup is a breakfast cup holding half a pint. The spoons are the silver ones in general use. A spoonful of dry material is one in which the convexity at the top corresponds to the concavity of the spoon. A scant spoonful should be made level with the edges of the spoon. In measuring half a teaspoon of dry material, fill it first and then divide it with a knife long ways down the spoon. A heaping cupful is a cup filled as full as it will hold. A cupful should be leveled. A scant cupful should not be filled above about quarter of an inch from the top. It is necessary to remember in measuring half or quarter cups that a cup is smaller at the bottom than the top. It is more satisfactory measuring to have half pint measures marked into quarters. 
baking powder. Baking powder can be used in the making of most cakes. In some, however, the proportion of carbonate of soda of which it consists is not right, in which case the two ingredients should be used separately according to the directions. Almost invariably soda should be mixed with milk or water, which should then be strained in order to keep back any dregs. Cream of tartar should be mixed with the flour, which should then be sifted. Both cream of tartar and soda should be pulverized before they are measured or used. Baking powder can be bought or made as follows. One part carbonate of soda, two parts cream of tartar. It should be kept in an airtight tin. In nearly all cases, baking powder is best mixed with the flour, which should then be sifted through a fine sieve. Mixing. There are three ways of mixing. Stirring, beating, cutting, or folding. To stir. Let the spoon touch the bottom and sides of the basin and move it round quickly in circles of various sizes. Do not lift it out of the mixture and work well against the sides. To beat. Tip the bowl to one side. Bring the spoon or fork quickly down into the mixture and through it. Take it out the other side and bring it over and down again, scraping the sides well each time it goes in. It is important to keep the bowl of the spoon well scraped out during mixing. Beat quickly and hard. To cut or fold. Turn over the mixture with a spoon and lift it up, folding in the white of egg as lightly as possible. Do not stir or beat, but mix very gently until quite blended. To beat eggs. It is generally best to beat the yolks and whites separately. For beating them, there is nothing better than a Dover egg beater, although a fork can be used for the yolks and a steel knife for the whites. Beat the yolks in a bowl until they thicken and become light and creamy. Beat the whites on a platter until they are stiff and absolutely dry. To beat butter. In beating butter to a cream, if very hard, it can be slightly warmed in the oven or put into a hot bowl. But it must on no account be melted. It should just be softened in order to make it more easy to beat it. To grease and fill tins. Tins can be greased with fresh butter, lard, or sweet oil. Sides and bottom should be evenly but not thickly smeared with grease. When a tin is to be lined with paper, cut a piece to fit the bottom exactly, another piece to go right round the sides. This piece should project two or three inches above the top of the tin. Grease the papers thoroughly before putting them in the tin. Fill the tins two-thirds full, leaving a very slight depression in the center if a flat cake is wanted, as the tendency is to rise in the middle. The Oven Nearly all cakes should be baked in a moderate oven. 
and the fire should be so made up before putting a cake in the oven that it will not have to be touched again until the cake is taken out. If this is impossible, owing to the length of time it takes, add a little coal frequently to the fire instead of letting it down and making it up with a great deal of fuel. In baking in a gas stove, it is important that there should be no drafts from window or door. Set the cake in the middle of the oven and do not move it until it has risen its full height, which will take about half the time in which it is baked. For the first quarter of an hour, it is not necessary to look at the cake unless there is a fear that the oven is too hot. Afterwards, do so occasionally, opening and shutting the oven door very gently and never taking the cake out. After it has fully risen, the cake can be turned round if it is baking quicker on one side than the other. Do not have anything else in the oven while baking a cake. For layer cakes and thin cakes make up a larger fire. They should bake quickly. To test whether a cake is done, put a clean straw or skewer into the thickest part of it. If it comes out clean, the cake is done. To remove cakes from tins. With a few exceptions, cakes should be taken out of their tins directly they come out of the oven. Turn the tin upside down and, if necessary, loosen the sides with a knife. Set on a sieve to cool. To all cake mixtures add a little salt sifting it with the flour in the proportion of a small salt spoon of salt to every half pint of flour. Keep flour and sugar in a dry place, or dry thoroughly before using. Schoolroom Cakes Fruit Cake Without Eggs 1 cup butter 1 cup sugar 1 and a half pints sifted flour 1 pound stoned and chopped raisins 1 teaspoon grated nutmeg 1 teaspoon powdered cinnamon 1 pint sour milk or cream 1 teaspoon soda Beat the butter to a cream Add the sugar Beat again very thoroughly. Add one pint of flour. Mix the raisins and spices with half a pint of flour. Add them to the mixture. Mix thoroughly and beat five minutes. Dissolve the soda in the sour milk. Stir it in. Bake at once in buttered tins. One hour in a moderate oven. Gingerbread. One pound flour, half a pound butter, half a pound treacle, half a pound sugar, two tablespoons powdered ginger, one teaspoon carbonate of soda, three eggs. Melt the butter, sugar, and treacle in a saucepan and pour them gradually when not too hot over the well-beaten eggs, stirring continually. Add the soda and ginger, then the flour, stirring it well in. Bake in a slow oven for an hour and a half in a well-greased tin. One 
one egg cake, half a cup butter, one cup powdered sugar, one egg, one cup milk, two cups flour, half a teaspoon carbonate of soda, one teaspoon cream of tartar, one teaspoon vanilla, or the grated rind and juice of half a lemon. Cream the butter and add the sugar. Beat well together. Beat the egg till light and add it, and then the milk with the soda dissolved in it. Stir in the flour with which the cream of tartar should be mixed. Beat well together and add the vanilla. Bake in a shallow tin in a moderate oven for half an hour. Plain Sultana Cake One pound flour Quarter pound butter Quarter pound sugar Half a pound sultanas, currants, or raisins Two ounces peel Two eggs Half a pint milk Rub the butter into the flour Add the sugar, then the peel cut into small pieces, and well-floured fruit. Beat the eggs till light and creamy. Add them to the mixture. Dissolve the soda in the milk. Work all together thoroughly with the hands. Bake at once for an hour to an hour and a half. Or, substitute one teaspoon baking powder for the carbonate of soda. Beat the butter to a cream. Add the sugar, eggs, and fruit, beating all the time. Mix the baking powder with the flour. Add the flour to the mixture with the milk and beat well. Bake about one and a half hours in a moderate oven. Seed cake, lunch, one pound flour, quarter pound dripping or butter, quarter pound moist sugar, one teaspoon ground caraway seed, one egg, one ounce candied peel, half a pint milk, half teaspoon carbonate of soda. Rub the butter into the flour. Add sugar, seed, candied peel, egg, and the milk in which the soda has been dissolved. Mix the whole thoroughly, working together with the hand. Bake at once for one and a quarter hours in a moderate oven. Tea Cakes American Crumpets 3 cups warm milk half cup yeast 2 tablespoons melted butter 1 salt spoon salt 1 salt spoon soda flour Mix the yeast, milk, salt, and sufficient flour to make a good batter and set to rise. When well risen, beat in the melted butter. Sift the soda and stir it in dry. Put in a well greased patty pans or muffin rings, allowing the batter to rise for 15 minutes before putting into the oven. Bake in a quick oven. American Muffins with Eggs One quart milk Three quarters cup yeast 
2 tablespoons powdered sugar, 1 tablespoon butter, 1 teaspoon salt, 4 eggs, flour. Mix all the ingredients except the eggs with sufficient flour to make a good batter overnight. Cover and set to rise. In the morning, beat the eggs till very light. Stir them in. Bake for 20 minutes in a quick oven in well-greased muffin rings. American Muffins Without Yeast Half pint milk Half pint cream One heaping pint of flour Three eggs One tablespoon of melted lard and butter mixed Beat the yolks and whites separately Stir them together Add the milk, salt, butter, and flour Bake at once in well-greased muffin tins in a quick oven the tins should only be filled half full of the mixture. Serve hot. Balloon Cakes 2 tablespoons yeast 4 tablespoons cream 6 tablespoons flour Mix the yeast with the cream. Sift the flour Work the yeast and cream into it. Set in a warm place to rise. When risen, roll out very thin. Cut into round cakes. Bake for four minutes. Breakfast scones. One quart milk. Three quarters cup lard and butter. 3 quarters cup yeast, 2 tablespoons white sugar, 1 teaspoon salt, flour. Warm the milk. Melt the lard and butter. Add it to the milk. Stir in sufficient flour, sugar, salt, and yeast to make a soft dough. Mix overnight. Cover and leave to rise. Roll out lightly. In the morning, until about three quarters of an inch thick. Cut into round scones. Let them rise 20 minutes. Bake for 20 minutes. Or, mix the ingredients in the morning with half the quantity of flour Set to rise for five hours. Work in the rest of the flour and let it rise another five hours. Cut into round cakes. Let them rise 20 minutes. Kringles. Quarter pound butter. One pound flour. Two ounces sugar. 2 tablespoons yeast, half a pint milk, 2 eggs. Rub the butter into the flour. Add the sugar. Take half of this mixture. Add to it quarter of a pint of milk and the yeast. Cover over and set to rise in a warm place. When risen, add the rest of the flour, etc. to it. Also add a quarter of a pint more milk and the two eggs. Mix into a light dough. Roll out to the thickness of a finger. Cut into fancy shapes. Set them on a baking tin in a warm place to rise. Bake when risen. When baked, wash over with milk 
and sugar. Crumpets. Three quarter pound of fine flour. Three quarter ounce German yeast. One teaspoonful powdered sugar. A pinch of salt. One pint bare measure of milk. One egg. Mix the salt and sugar with the flour. Dissolve the yeast in a little of the milk and stir it into the flour. Break the egg into it and beat together with a wooden spoon. Then add the remainder of the milk by degrees, making it into a nice batter. Set it before the fire, covered with a cloth, to rise for two hours, and bake in tin rings on a slab of stone or marble, heated on the top of an ordinary kitchen range or closed stove. This will take about two hours to heat. The stone must not be less than one and a half inches thick, or it is liable to crack with the heat. A discarded marble mantelpiece is excellent for this purpose. The crumpet rings should be slightly buttered. Place them on the stone when your batter is ready and pour into each a small teacupful of the batter. As soon as the crumpet has risen, remove the ring and turn the crumpet over on the stone. They cook very quickly. Dropped scones. Four cups flour. Two cups milk. One egg half teaspoon carbonate of soda, quarter teaspoon tartaric acid, two tablespoons powdered sugar. Beat the egg. Mix all together into a smooth batter. Fry in butter in a small frying pan, a spoonful at a time. Golden Corn Cake Three quarters cup cornmeal One cup flour Quarter cup powdered sugar One cup milk. One egg. One tablespoon butter. Four teaspoons baking powder. Mix the meal, flour, sugar, and baking powder thoroughly together and sift. Beat the egg well. Add it to the milk. Melt the butter and stir it into the milk. Mix all together. Bake for 20 minutes in a shallow buttered